Hello everyone and welcome to Beam NG Driver. We are going to be taking more of your mad automation creations around our rather technical and plenty challenging autocross course. I have while well, of course we get to get people in before we set this first car on the go. We've got a pretty serious contender uh, starting today. We have got, this comes from Destriga. I'm not sure if I am pronouncing that one correctly. I apologise. Uh, again, it's just the, the general assumption is I'm probably not getting the names correct. So I, sorry, I struggle with words and things. Uh, it is the Sakura NRX GT Sprint. Looks the part, certainly. Certainly looks the part of this one. All-wheel drive, V6, naturally aspirated. And again, figures, numbers, stats-wise, this looks like this could stand a very good chance of going quickly. 336 horsepower, 215 torque. Not too bad. Weighs just 780 kilos. Full push rod suspension all around. Massive tyres. There are three wings. Note the uh, large wing at the back. There's actually a little wing in between the posts for... The big wing. <laughs> of course there is, and there's one at the front for a little bit of additional front downforce, because why on earth not? Pretty mad. Pretty mad contraption. Now, if you are just joining, welcome everybody. Uh, Tie-dye Racing Game, Christopher MK, Templar Not, uh, Ben Ward, uh, Burnout, Eos Company. You're not last anymore, Eos. Uh, <laughs> you are not at the bottom. Somebody has got... Actually, two cars have gone slower than the Eos around here. One of them was a 20-horsepower Mini that was terrible, and one of them was a pickup truck running off-road tyres that was very big. Didn't really work. Also very, very heavy. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, then, yeah, uh, welcome everyone else who is now just uh, just joining in. If you want to uh, keep up to date with, uh, God, I say if you want to keep up to date, if you want to keep track of all of the various stats and statistics and figures and so on for the vehicles in the description of the video, there is a link to a Google Docs. Massive thank you. I don't know if says to Paul, she's currently hanging around in chat or not, but massive, massive thank you to Cessna for the work he's done with this uh, seriously impressive spreadsheet. Uh, there is lots of information uh, on there. So, yeah, if you want to see cars, power figures, and what sort of stuff is going to be coming up in the but in, in the future, then you can. I'll say in the future, through the course of this episode, etc. You can. Uh, also, if you are feeling incredibly generous, what we can't do uh, requests on this because I have to. I'm running through the cars, you know, for this series. I can't, you know, take requests for vehicles. But if you are feeling incredibly generous, I've got both the super chat uh, or the YouTube super chat system uh, is working. There is also a link in the description uh, to to uh, donate to the to the channel. Uh, tie dye racing asking uh, did I get to did I go to the uh, World Endurance Championship Silverstone last weekend I didn't know uh, I actually ended up not being around uh, sadly last weekend so uh, e even if I had been free I wouldn't have been able to um, I saw it a little bit I think it was Toyota's got all banned or not banned or got disqualified after despite winning easily they got disqualified I, who knows why they were bothering why they why why they would run so close to the rules for that but. Uh, <laughs> There we go. Um, shall we get started? We've got we've got people in. Uh, good afternoon, morning, evening, uh, middle of the night, depending on uh, where you might be in the world. We are going to get ready to run what could be a serious contender for the fireball. There is potentials. There is potential certainly for this car to go towards the top. There might be a steering issues. We might have wobbly wheel issues. Uh, do we have... I did turn this I did turn the SC off before I started the stream. Right, let's go and see what we can do. It has got very, very short gear ratios. Uh, sequential box in this... Oh, yeah, there we go. We've got a little bit of the old... Uh, the old wobbly wheels are back. Ah, oh, we haven't had a good wobbly wheel for a while. Uh, <laughs> They are very, like they are. The wheels are so massive on this car, and just the, the force is essentially going through it as we turn around these corners. So immense that uh, oh, you can just see it flapping about. It's not what you want from a. Oh, there goes the brakes. Ah, <laughs> right. We're gonna have to be really careful 
because the wheel vibrations will actually stop. So we've talked about this before, um, the wheel vibrations. So there is actually no bodywork clipping going on with this car. It is actually the wheel vibrations that uh, cause the grief with the ABS turning off. It's not, and it's these like physical tire size and so on that uh, causes the wheel wobble. It's not clipping on the bodywork. Uh, as some people have said, because there is very, very much none of it happening here. Um, so yeah, we have those two together. We've got to be careful. I've got to be very, very careful with this vehicle, how I try and slow it down, how I approach some of these corners. Honestly, I'm not sure if third gear might be better out of some of these turns, because second doesn't really work so well. Holy crap, it is quick though. <laughs> so, we had big issues slowing down uh, in a couple of places, and we had... I mean, that's, that's a, a very heavy hit. We had some big issues slowing down uh, in a couple of places. It wasn't a particularly um, great run. It's still a 17.8. So, <laughs> this thing has got some serious, serious potential. I mean, a 16.1 is still... That's a fair, fair long way away. 16.1 is still a fair long way away if we are going to be uh, breaking a record. But... Uh, here we go. Let's try again. I think... Let's just try. I'm going to try a third gear launch out of these corners. Because, yeah, third gear works. Power delivery is still still very much there. Power is still very much uh, on tap as you get out of the car. Oh, I hear it might want second. Oh, I don't know. It does stop there being any wobbly wheels. Uh, because we're not quite being as ludicrous with the power... Uh, delivery. Essentially, it, it's being smooth. Well, I say it's being smoother. I, I can get away with mashing full throttle and we don't have any issues because at the point we are in the rev range, we are slightly using slightly less power. Uh, <laughs> it, it works. It, it works for sort of easy, easy, lazy throttle control. Uh, we are out very wide over there. I think, I think annoyingly, second is probably what we're going to, to what we just will run the risk of some wheel wobble out out of the corners. And once they start vibrating, the uh, car does not want to, st to stop shaking the wheels around. Uh, we are up towards the 90 mile an hour mark down the back straight, which is pretty, pretty solid. A little bit of vehicle vibration as we dive on the brakes for the uh, big final stopping zone. Oh, it's quick. <laughs> Bloody hell. Um... That is a 16.4, three tenths of a second are uh, left to find. We've got a new second place. We have got a new second place here. Uh, <laughs> oh, can we do it? Three tenths are needed. That's asking a lot. Uh, Someone in the chat uh, say, can we use a handbrake? Uh, no. Most of the cars that will run in here, the handbrake is utterly pointless. Not only are you wasting time, of course, going sideways, the bigger issue, the tyres on the cars are so big, the handbrake doesn't actually do much. The cars have so much grip and the tyres are so wide, trying to slide the cars is pointless. It's actually awful. But you lose so much time because the back end doesn't do at all what you want, and then you lose so much time trying to put any power down because the car's going where it shouldn't. So... <laughs> Yeah, handbrake is, with the exception of a couple of cars that have been truly awful, in which a handbrake has been very much needed, uh, it, it doesn't, it does not help. A car like this just physically won't slide around. There goes that front wheel wobble. Uh, I'm gonna try second gear. I think, like, we have got a sequential box, so, like, the time for the gear shifts isn't a problem. The, the time between, like, it won't, it won't lose time uh, shifting gear. Particularly, it doesn't seem to upset the car going between them. It's whether we get big wheel vibrations from the car uh, and that causing the brakes to stop. We're a little wide through there. Can oh, might have actually got that uh, stopped a little bit too quickly. We'll have to see how that all goes. Yeah, you can see you can see the front end threatening to pull itself apart. I will show you after this run something which I haven't showed you with cars before. I'm hoping this is going to do it actually because now now I've said I'm going to show you something. I don't know whether the uh, vehicle is going to be cooperative or not with it uh, about the dangers of the wheel. We kind of saw it a little bit with the fireball if for those that watched the uh, stream in which we had the other uh, fireball run through the course. Uh, we are going to head up towards... Oh, big stop again. Ah, that might be problematic. I think we had a little bit of wheel wobble as we tried to slow down. <laughs> oh, no, turning too soon. I don't think we were doing it anyway. <laughs> ah. 
Yeah, it all went wrong as we came out, came down towards that. Um, all went wrong as we came down towards that final section where I was on the brakes. They just didn't want to stop. That's annoying. That's annoying. Just couldn't quite, couldn't quite do it in in that one. What I did want to show you was, so we're not running the car again. Um, but if I do a donut, or even even a half-ass donuts, this will. I think tear itself apart. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if this particular car is going to do it, but uh, here we go. So once we start, you can see the wheel shake, shake, shake. Are oh, you gonna fall off? Oh yeah! Wow, that's actually very quick. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've, that's actually I think the fastest I've had a car donut and tear itself apart. That's quite impressive. Uh, the God, was it? Hell Climb Special would do it. A few other cars I've had would do it as well. Uh, in fact, even this with the three-wheel donut shakes the rear wheel slightly. This is just a huge amount of grip. This is the huge amount. Basically, you've got so much grip in the back of the car uh, when trying to do this that the back end moves around a lot. And it then... Oh, yeah. But, well, the wheels are kind of hopping across the road and they start resonating. And it'll go until the wheel... Until, well, there's not enough strength in the rear of the car and then it falls apart so <laughs> so there we go and uh, it's it's an impressive thing this is a very 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 cool vehicle it's a very very fast vehicle um it's right up there with the with the fireball although the shaking around of the wheels is a problem and it's something the fireball had a little bit but not as much and it's just a bit easier to drive so <laughs> There we go. I've actually got the front wheels vibrating with the uh, spinning around. You know, perfect. Uh, <laughs> we've got the, we the front. I've never seen the front wheels go while doing that. Our, ne well, our next car is supposed to be the Audata 2.0, but that does not. I don't think I've got that one working in the game at the moment. I'll have to come back and try and faff around and get that happening at, uh, at another point. Sadly, that doesn't seem to be a thing that. Uh, that we can use today. Uh, so instead, we will go to the Galleon Super Wagon. Now, last time out, we had a very, very fast estate car. Actually, that went into the 17s as well. It was a very, very quick vehicle and it was very impressive. Big car, all wheel drive, decent amount of power, and yeah, sure enough, it went fairly high up on the leaderboard. I think it went fourth on the on the leaderboard. This bigger state car, maybe not quite so much. Uh, so <laughs> this one comes from Two JZ Life. It is a rear wheel drive turbocharged i5 powering it. Uh, 427 horsepower is actually pretty good. Um, 284 torque, not bad. Does weigh one and a half tons. Does weigh one and a half tons, which is a lot, as we have seen, or well, for this course. It's, it's an interesting looking car. It's an interesting looking car. Um, I don't think the textures are helping it around the front. It's like sort of slightly, slightly interesting sort of canard slash lips going. On. Either way, yeah, it's okay. This is another one of the vehicles that is. I'm not quite sure about the vents around the rear lights. They look a little bit, I mean, a little bit peculiar. E either way, it's a cool looking car. And it looks like something, again, something that would exist, uh, potentially, would potentially exist. But at one and a half tons in rear wheel drive, I fear we're going to have issues with handling. Uh, I fear we're going to have issues with handling take your bets folks are we gonna have drifty oversteery wagon or are we gonna have a another seriously fast oh brakes don't really feel like they're working uh have we got another car we, oh we are gonna have drifty wagon drifty wagons hits up drifty wagons hit something but wagon is pretty pretty strong so <laughs> does it doesn't really matter are you on semi slick tires i'm not sure the brakes really do feel garbage uh that might just be because we've gone from a sub 800 kilo car to a very large estate vehicle. And, you know, that is... Uh, oh, that very, very nearly ended up in a big crash. I think we might... Whoa, that's more big slides. I 
think we might still be on semi-slick tyres. Oh, Christ. Uh, yeah, we are on semi-slick tyres. The car, the car has no rear end grip. We needed the mighty wings for this. We needed the mighty wings for this. It doesn't, it doesn't really have much in the way of rear end grip. The front wheel is behaving itself having come off now. I mean, we did hit that corner twice. Uh, come on. Come on. Please. Why are you doing... Uh, I think because that wheel's missing. It's now wanting to do a one-tire fire. Um, oh, don't go inside-out wheel because that's going to be a real pain. At least being rear-wheel drive, the front wheel isn't trying to drive the car in any direction. It's just being a, uh, well, pain. Just, just, just dragging along the road again. I'd much rather the wheel just fell off at this point. Uh... <laughs> Oh, no, don't just... Every so often it kind of touches the ground in the way the wheel... Well, in, in a way enough to affect the vehicle. The funny thing is we are still... I mean, we might even beat the... Uh, it's going to be quite close, actually, to beating the vampire. Uh, come on, don't bounce, don't bounce, don't bounce. Go, 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 go. We're not quite beating the vampire, but we wouldn't be last. We, we would not be last if... <laughs> so, I mean, it shows that there is some time in the car. It shows that there is some time in the car if that manages to not go last despite only having three wheels and very sideways. Uh, oh, I've just seen the brakes. <laughs> Hold on a second. Before we... Uh, can I? I can move the camera around freely before we go. If you Look at those. Look at those. Look at the car that we are putting them in. One and a half tons. It's being stopped by that. <laughs> that that has got to stop all of this car are the back even worse or are they the same? No, I think the same I think this might be like the default size for brakes on some cars and people have either forgotten to check or gone based on what the sliders say and while we don't you don't want the ultra sharp brakes uh, the ultra sharp brakes are not good they have their own problems they confuse the ABS and everything just locks up uh, so you know confusing the ABS and having the car lock up horrendously is is not good. Equally, having tiny brakes on a big heavy car it problematic we've seen the problems. We we have seen the uh seen the problems with tiny brakes already and we're going to see them again. We are going to see them again. I still think this might set an okay time. We'll probably see a sub 130 from it uh, if I can keep the oversteer in check. Uh, it does handle pretty well. If anything, it's got so much front-end grip that uh, the back... Well, the, the back kind of does its own thing, shall we say. The back does its own thing. It uh, sometimes behaves. Sometimes it's very sideways. There's a lot more front-end grip than there is rear-end grip, essentially. Uh, <laughs> which is... Oh, God. I mean, front-end grip is helpful for autocross. I would just like a little bit more balance. Just a teensy bit more balance for my vehicles. Gearbox, or well, so gear ratios, engine-wise, is actually pretty good. Uh, the throttle response, that power delivery, is not too bad at all. Uh, there's a second gear is working out of these corners, sort of right length of gear, pretty much. Oh, we're going to have a big wiggle. That's not really what we wanted. Got away with it, though. What are we going to see straight line speed-wise from the car? Oh, God. I'm actually in danger of overheating the brakes. Uh, <laughs> Not quite overheating the brakes. They are vented discs at the front, so yeah, it's not so likely. We probably won't burn those up, thankfully. Uh, we haven't had a car overheating the brakes yet. Uh, I don't think. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if something does. Hey, that's a actually pretty respectable time. <laughs> that is a pretty respectable time. We have run a 27-1 for what is a very big, very heavy tiny braked car 27.1 for a rear wheel drive vehicle is not bad that is uh, that is not too bad at all I've got one more run with the car can we go into the 26's or maybe even the 20, 25's is probably pushing it for, for this, certainly for this sort of style of car, we're going to have a wiggle not too much in the way of oversteer this time around, it's all about trying to both be aggressive with the car to get some speed without losing too much time to the oversteer. Do I want to leave it in second around here? I think we can. I think we can get away with a just just leave it in second out of these corners and we're going to have big wheel spin. 
Just light up the uh, rear of the car a little bit. Why not? It's not as good a drift machine as the whatever it was, I4 Turbo. The thing that we literally had to drift everywhere to get it around a corner. Oh, <laughs> I will say this much. I will say this much. It is not exactly a car suited to the demands of autocross, but it's a lot of fun around here. It doesn't... It is a big, heavy car, but because it's so lively, it doesn't feel it. This thing with bigger brakes would actually be pretty respectable, I think, around here. Ultimately, power to weight ratio is just not going to be there. Uh, however, it's yeah doing pretty well, if I don't hit that. Well, we just pinged the front wheel off of it. What are we going to do lap time-wise? Oh! <laughs> couldn't quite couldn't quite make it into a 25 but that I am impressed with uh, that that I am very very impressed with indeed well done well well for a yeah one and a half ton boat that is a certainly very very well done performance uh, <laughs> cactus Jones thank you very much for the for the super chat. Uh, say hello there. First stream that uh, that I can attend. I hope you enjoy the uh, the stream. For those that are tuning in and wondering why I am streaming on YouTube as opposed to uh, Twitch, the reason being as this series is going on onto it's going to be going on YouTube. There's the, the whole point of this series was to put it on YouTube, and when we got an awful awful lot of entries. I realised it was going to be very difficult to get through all of the cars. There are many of them. Uh, so the easiest way to do it is is during a stream. Okay, we'll get distracted and we'll, you know, answer questions, etc. But seeing as YouTube kind of automatically uh, uploads afterwards, it makes sense to, to stream to here. And after this series is done, then... I might still do a, a Friday stream on YouTube. We'll swap out different games or so on. I'll see. I don't know what I'm going to do. Again, for, for those asking about the, the cars, the entries for this series are long closed. As, I mean, it was silly. <laughs> the number of entries was mad. I'm hoping I can get through all of them. I'm hoping that people will still be interested in the series uh, so that I can get through all of them. Uh, the next series will be run differently. This one, I wanted to have it as open as possible. You know, there was an engine limit and that was it. So I was happy to go let people, if you want to go mad with the quality sliders, go for it. Uh, that was the point of this series. The next series will be very different in the restrictions for the cars, the restrictions for whatever we end up running. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to take us to get through all of these. We're on... I mean, we're about a fifth of the way through <laughs> through everything. It's, yeah, um, an interesting one. An interesting one. This Much like this car. This car is an interesting one. Uh, I will say the headlights are, there are supposed to be headlights on this car. They were using a mod that I don't have, so when I had to export this one, uh, they are not there. Not the fault of the creator per se. So, yeah, there are no headlights on the car. Uh, this is from Disprosium. It is the Fenrir Fraser. I've again. I mean, I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> don't really know how to pronounce any of that. All-wheel drive, naturally aspirated V10. I'm not quite sure what's going on at the back. However, uh, there is 304 horsepower in it, uh, just shy of 200 torque. It is a bit heavy at uh, 1,057 kilos. I mean, it's lighter than the estate car that just ran, but it is also not got as much power. The V10s, we have struggled in terms of torque with the uh, with the V10s. They have tended to be quite under torque in comparison to uh, other other engines. Uh, what have we got tires? Oh, you're on road tires. Oh, you're gonna have fun. Oh well, all-wheel drive is good. Road tires are not. Road tires on. A heavy car might struggle, but let's go and see what it can do. Uh, the gearbox is a oh Christ, yeah, okay, so you aren't going to turn. Uh, it is a 
normal manual gearbox, which means there will be... Oh god, it's very understeery. <laughs> normal manual gearbox means there will be a delay as we go to change gears between... Yeah, it's just a small delay. But it all, it all costs, you know, fractions of seconds over the course of a run. The bigger issue with all of this is, of course, understeer. Well, I'd say understeer, it is just a lack of grip. In this, it is tending to understeer rather than oversteer, which I would prefer. However, it does make it rather difficult around this course. You need a lot of grip. At the end of the day, for autocross, you need... Uh, a huge, huge amount of grip, and well, having semi-slick tyres is a big advantage, that massive advantage, really. Uh, we're, we're probably going to struggle to see the car, what have we got, about 26s out of all-wheel drive cars with uh, road tyres, that's about where we have seen vehicles going. Uh, if we can go any, if we go faster than that, I would be impressed. But uh, there we go through these final corners. Wow, that, that is not fast. <laughs> okay, I mean it wasn't a great run by me. There was a few places where we were understeering around. That is the problem we have with non, non well essentially non race tyres around this course. Non-race tyres on quite a heavy vehicle. Can we stop the understeer? That is the big question. I didn't actually have a look to see what size the brakes were on the car. Uh, Temperature-wise, looks okay. I mean, they're actually in the green as... Are they carbon ceramic as opposed to... Vent? I think they are. They've got ceramic brakes on it. Uh, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's... I mean, they, they are green as opposed to blue, which... I would imagine is pretty good. Um, Chat say the car looks like a TVR. I mean, only a TVR could come up with the back end like this, I think. It is safe to say. Uh, on, only TVR could come up with a vehicle that looked like this. <laughs> I, it's, it's impressive. I will, I will say that much. It is impressively unique. You won't find another car like it around the place. Um, as at the front, not loading the headlights. Uh, the, the front looks um, front looks pretty good when the headlights actually load. Uh, so, uh, oh god, so the headlights load when the things aren't mods that you can actually use. I'm very wide through there. Didn't even pay any attention to what speed it uh, it got up to. Leaving it in third will work, and slow it down for the hairpin and little wiggle towards the please turn please turn and smack into the wall 29.3 it's better it's better i think there is a little bit more time potentially to come in the car They're pretty strong pretty strong got away with the uh, clonk in the wall without actually that much damage but can we do a 28 with the big understeery vehicle I don't know place your bets place your bets if we can get a 28 out of uh, out of this we're gonna have a big nope not if <laughs> so it really is tends to oversteer even when I do really go for it you can't get the back of the car moving around whatsoever again that's not such a bad thing in places however yeah we are just you're, you're limited so much by what you can do for these tighter turns just by the by the tires we're gonna run very wide there i mean that's considerably slower than a lot of cars have gone through there and we're still struggling immensely for that all important grip uh, we'll get on that power early let it understeer itself that is a place where that little bit of on power understeer can be helpful you just kind of boot it let the car understeer its way wide to line up for the next corner. Twist it through there. We go on to the back straight. What is that top speed? 72. Yeah, it won't be helped by the 
that power to weight ratio is probably the uh, fairest thing to, uh, to to measure. Don't get things wrong through the archway. It seems to be struggling with that old braking performance. Oh, please turn. It was going well up until this final section. And now we've understeered. It's 29. It's another car. Oh, wow. I've seen the side. <laughs> um, the front brakes are ginormous. The rear brakes are tiny. And yeah, it's, it's just not got the tyres. It's not got the tyres to do it. It's a little bit heavy. And... That's the downside. That is the the downside of the vehicle. Uh, you would ask me, do you think in years to come, games like Forza will have the ability to build your own cars? I very, very highly doubt it. I think the bigger issue is, even if the technology is there, which I guess you might be able to do, uh, licensing would probably not allow it somehow. I don't think Ferrari and Lamborghini... Um, would ever want to have their car. It would be interesting to see it, but I don't think Ferrari or Lamborghini would ever want to have their cars race up against random homemade contraptions and being beaten. Uh, certainly not by, you know, because you know the sort of thing that we would do. We'd try and build like a one litre silly little vehicle to uh, <laughs> smash a Ferrari. And I, I think they would, I don't, don't think manufacturers would want, they're touchy enough as it is with licensing. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, if we were to assume, of course, that Forza would go down the line of an automation style car creator uh, that would be i i would love to see it but i don't think it's i just don't think it's going to unfortunately be a thing that uh, <laughs> that can happen uh mr gb red thank you very much for the donation uh saying i ate a clock for lunch yesterday it was very time consuming uh, especially when i went back for seconds <laughs> Um, GB Red is always there with the brilliantly awful, brilliantly awful dad jokes. Uh, <laughs> you gotta love them. You gotta love them. I like you improve. You improve with every donation. You get more and more impressive with the. Oh, I've lost my place on the thing for the documents, bugger. Uh, but yes, you get more and more impressive with the with the dad jokes each time. It's quite impressive. Uh, <laughs> Right, this is our next vehicle uh, to appear. Um, uh, Julio asking, has your trailer got back all the happy trains in the angry videos? No, 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 it hasn't. Um, I've been working on a video for a while uh, talking about, shall we say, the current state. Uh, <laughs> it's not good. It is. It is not good, and it is not good. It is not good at all, and every time I think I'm almost ready to do the video, um, we go and find something else. But basically, it's a video that is going to be hell to make, because I don't want to have to go and look through the utter garbage that I will have to, uh, to actually make the video. So I keep putting off, and then I keep putting it off, and then I learn more stuff, and then I keep putting it off, and then we learn more stuff. It's, it's not good. It is It is not good. I mean, the only plus point is, of all the YouTube channels I... Well, I, say all, I don't watch that many YouTube channels, but four of the five channels slash collectives I watch are either actively complaining about it or actively, I say abandoning, but certainly swapping away or changing their focus. Um, and the other one is Rooster Teeth that have so many business ventures that YouTube is kind of a little bit unimportant. Even they're having some struggles if you look at numbers so yeah it's it's utter hell unless you are a lucky unless you are a very very lucky channel um that will be a discussion for another day shall we say uh anyway let's go back to happier things of trying to run somebody's car around the course this vehicle uh, comes from mr sleepy it is the fell race ma1 all-wheel drive turbocharged flat six which probably means deafening noise Oh no, the flat sixth is not making a deafening noise. That is very impressive. Uh, <laughs> um, I maybe they've tweaked something in the game. Uh, Three hundred thirty-four 
Horsepower, 227 torque, weighs just over 1,000, 1,001 kilos. We are full, push rod suspension all around. Big wheels, but potentially sensible wheels in this. Potentially sensible, like they're, they're large, maybe not quite wheel shattering issues. I think power to weight ratio might still be a little bit down, but we will have to wait and see. Uh, Cactus Jones, thank you very much for the... Uh, super chat uh, so <laughs> i think this one to uh, to gb red uh, say so your jokes are uh, quite Im are quite impressive uh, you must be very proud uh, <laughs> oh dear we, if we if we can uh, i mean if we want to have a competition for the terrible list of dad jokes um that's that's always an entertaining thing um right i'm gonna hazard a guess this is gonna be a low 120 sort of a car looking at the stats i'm gonna go for a low 120s sort of a vehicle braking performance is pretty good it's actually getting slowed down neatly oh we're gonna have a maybe a little teetsy scary moment uh through there front end grip not too bad like ultimately what's gonna let this car down is it's too heavy uh <laughs> ultimately it's gonna be a smidge too heavy when you your very fastest cars are seven eight hundred kilos when you're 300 kilos heavier with similar sorts of power outputs. I'm in the wrong gear through all of there. Uh, it's going to be a difficult thing. It's a good looking car. I will say that much. Actually, the back of it looks... I quite like the back of this uh, of this vehicle. I completely stuffed up that corner because I didn't go anywhere near wide enough. I was holding that one far too tight through. Okay. <laughs> still in understeer vehicle mode. I'm I'm still, oh, still in understeer vehicle mode. Got, got away with just downshifting to first to just got to insta slow the car down and chuck the car oh, through the corner. That's pretty good. Straight line speed down the back straight. Again, we're not seeing the giddying heights. Oh, okay. We touch a wall and we flip. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Nothing to see here. We might actually still go and set a half decent run side. The front wheels are completely splayed out, but it is still drivable somehow in all of this. That final corner there is difficult. I mean, it's a 20, it's a 24 seven considering we've smacked the front wheels apart. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think potentially my guess of around the twenties mark is probably going to be where we're going to see the car go. So it drives, it does drive nicely does drive nicely uh, sensible handling vehicle sequential gearbox so we haven't got to worry about that uh, little bit of a uh, delay i can i think second gear is probably i think i was using third in a couple of places last run where i shouldn't have been second gear is pretty pretty good yeah i wouldn't want first out of there because if you go to first we will just buzz the limiter as soon as we fire the car out of the corner we would be in the limiter so we'll leave it in second uh, for all of those. Break a little bit earlier through here. I mean, it's certainly going to have... If we're carrying that sort of speed there, the car's going to be on semi-slicks. I mean, we saw the size of the tyres. Pretty sure it is on on the old semi-slicks. Just the way the car's handling is a uh, fairly fairly good indication now. Get on that power. Run the car wide. Get through the apex there. Dive on the brakes through this next turn. Try not to wander too much around here. Uh, first gear is kind of for desperate needs of change of direction. Uh, I think it kind of like almost locks the rear wheels changing down into it. 84 miles an hour. Yeah, it's not too shabby. If it wasn't quite so, if it could have just saved a few hundred kilos, this could could have potentially been right fighting at the front. Oh, too early on the brakes down there, which is not so good. Uh, it's, yeah, it just doesn't quite have the change of direction with the very, very fastest cars. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> It's going to be a good time. It is a 120.5. Um, <laughs> Skyworks Racing saying, can we get a Templar bot uh, for Twitter? I mean, we we keep uh, joking about renaming Moobot to various, various different things. I never got around to actually uh, <laughs> going to, to, to do it. We could have a Templar bot for... I think we do have a Templar bot for the old, the old YouTube streams. I don't know if we can get under a 20.5 uh, as of yet. We will have to uh, wait and see. Uh, for those asking about the mightiest of wings, no, it hasn't gone yet. The mightiest of wings, that is still to come. I'm not sure how far uh, the 
car is. It's not in the next couple of cars, but it will be. It will, it will be. Oh, that's a very, very big oversteery moment. Now, we can get away with that without it costing us too much time through that corner. The angle we ended up from that oversteery moment is actually better than a big understeery moment through there. You get away with uh, running... You get away with running too deep through there. Well, you get, if you run too deep, sorry, through there, you can't get away with holding the speed, whereas the big slide... We do sort of survive. Ah. Yeah, this is one of those cars that is agonizingly close to being very, very fast. It's just held back a little bit. I think just in terms of uh, in terms of the weight. Uh, we don't have wobbly wheels though, which is nice. Consistency. Consistency is always good in a car, especially when you've only got a small number of runs. And you've got three runs in a car, you can't afford to have a car be difficult to drive. If it does wibbly wobbly things, that's when you are going to have trouble and yeah this is a good car well it suddenly gets grip going off the banking it's <laughs> it's not the first car we, well we have seen cars going for rolls when it gets grip coming off the banking so i mean this just suddenly turning into a quarter sharper is a little scary it's not a better run annoyingly not a better run it's pretty close pretty close but uh not quite yeah, not quite good enough. Still fairly fairly well fa fairly well done. I was pretty accurate with my with my old timing timing guesswork on that. Uh Stanley asking, uh, where can I find the first place run? Well, I believe it was on the last the last stream at some point during that was when the fireball took the lead uh, which would be well I mean to search back through my channel it's two well this is the last two hour long video of, of the auto crossing that's that that's where the um, uh, what's it called would be where the fireballs uh, fireballs run would uh, would be yeah that's a pretty that's a pretty good car it's a pretty solid car so with a good time. Uh, the next vehicle should be the Jackal Fowler Race Edition, except for that it's got an illegal engine. Uh, that was a 2.6 litre, which is completely cheating. And actually, even with a cheaty engine, it probably wouldn't do, like, just looking at the stats, it just wasn't making that much more powerful, but breaks the rules, and therefore it does not run the horse. So, we have got the LLA. This will be our next vehicle. It looks the part. Ooh, it is quite nice and light. Nice and light is uh, nice and light is always what you want in your autocrossing car. Power wise, it isn't the most powerful. However, we will get to that. Here we go. Right, this is our next contender. Interesting looking. I like it. Interesting looking car. Uh, this comes from Link Luke. It is the LLA G Pop SSI. So lots of letters. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of letters, but there we go. It is all-wheel drive, flat four. 189 horsepower, 120 torque. Interesting sounding. Uh, so yeah, it's not massively, massively powerful, but uh, it is only 609 kilos, which makes it one of the lightest. It isn't the lightest cars. I think we've got cars down to the 500s and maybe even into the 400s. Uh, so... Yeah, there have been lighter, but 200 horsepower near me at this sort of weight. That's big, big power to weight ratio. And the, of course, the other big advantage of being so light is quarter grip. It's just less weight to have to move around the corners. Are we on? It's got carbon fiber wheels from what I can see. It has got pretty semi slick tires. They are large without being large enough to cause wheel wobble. I mean, the car itself might be a uh, scary light and no, there's no there's no sort of vehicle vibrations going on <laughs> with this this is quick this is very very quick or it feels very quick already it's got that punch out of the corners it might not have the most power but it has got the punch out of the corners um that it needs top speed doesn't matter it's completely irrelevant your car can do 100 I think some cars have had silly short gear ratios to uh, 
only um, only be able to do like 110 doesn't doesn't matter uh, like it's, it's completely irrelevant what your top speed is as long as as long as you can get out of these technical bits uh, well we have had some cars that are capable of like 200 miles an hour I actually know to like the fastest car is 198 miles an hour with I guess more normal gear ratios oh, this is very quick <laughs> this thing is very 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 quick that's I mean, we've got 80 miles an hour down the straights despite being underpowered, and it's still getting changed direction very, very well through these corners. And this is going to be a run towards the line. This might stand a chance of going quickest. 17-6. <laughs> on the first run. That's, an, that's another, another very, very good car. Uh, um... Okay. Okay. I thought it might be pretty good. I did not quite expect it to be that sort of that sort of level. But, you know, there we go. What can we do with this? Can we get another car into the 60s? If I get everything right, then we may well be able to uh, I say that. <laughs> Sometimes the first run is the best run because as you are pushing the car to try and find more more time with the vehicle, that's where you make mistakes. That's where you make mistakes. Uh, you make silly little errors. You turn in too soon, brake too late. The good news with this is that we don't have the... Oh, I have brake too late there. We don't have the wheel issues. We don't have the ABS issues that we have had from so many cars that can very much kill... I say can kill a run, but can kill your confidence. And then you make... Oh, little errors. There is actually a very, very faint bit of wheel hop uh, going through some of these long corners. I just noticed it there. Just the faintest bit where if you hold the steering for a, a smidge too much, it will just start to judder. But it is nothing like a lot of the cars that we have seen go very quick. I think the ABS might actually still have the brakes lock up ever so slightly. Uh, which is always a uh, always an interesting one. I'd be surprised. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that it would be on this, but there we go. This is definitely making the most of its 200 horsepower. It might actually be one of the most impressive vehicles for making the most of its 200 horsepower. It isn't a... Is it an improvement? However, um... Still bloody fast. I, it's a great driving car. It's a very, very good driving car. Um... <laughs> Anarchist pineapple saying needs a big wing. Everything needs a big wing. That is the, the general the general rule of life is uh, the bigger the wing, the better. Uh, there there is as I I mean as you've seen in the thumbnail image for this stream, there is something quite spectacular. It, it won't be very fast. I'm just going to put that out there, but it is going to have the most impressive wing of all time. So <laughs> so yeah, there we go. Uh, like the wings. I, I don't know how much the downforce difference. Maybe we'll have to investigate it at some point in in beam. I don't. The wings will make a difference to the way I believe to the way the car performs. Now around here, I mean this circuit is very very technical. Of course, you're not really getting up too much in the way of speed. That being said, any little bit of downforce is helpful. The main drawback from downforce is drag, but drag really affects your top speed which as we said before is kind of irrelevant uh, while sure you might lose a teensy smidge of acceleration down here if you if your wings are causing enough drag to lose your acceleration there they're also causing downforce to give you grip elsewhere so honestly there's no real downside with uh, <laughs> with having with having silly wing unless well i say uh, the, the downside is they look stupid if you don't want your car to have a mighty, mighty wing uh, on the top of it. Oh, it's a good run, it's a cross, it's a spin, it's a flip, and it's a tumble. Uh, it is, uh, yeah, big, big crash across the finish line. That, for 200 horsepower, for 200, uh, for sub 200 horsepower, that is a brilliant, brilliant little car. That is an absolutely exquisite little car. Lightness is very important, is essentially what we have learnt today. Or what we have learnt over many, many streams, many sessions of this. 
lightness is the number one number one priority because uh, that's that's an excellent engine in a very good handling car and that's right up there it's a second and a bit down on the very fastest time but 17s are in general very very impressive so i like the car i like the car very much indeed uh, <laughs> Ben Ward is having a go with the terrible dad jokes. Uh, two guys walk into a bar. The third one ducked. Well done. Well, well done indeed. Uh, uh, I, I think I think GB Red is still winning. I think I think GB Red is uh, is still winning on that one. Uh, Luna uh, saying, "Can we get five rolls today?" Yes, we will get five rolls today. Considering I know what's coming up, not the next car, but the car after, we will get a lot more than five rolls. Uh, <laughs> Our next vehicle is in kind of the purple, kind of the purple that I hope to get the Legnum in. Along the lines of the purple that I hope to get the Legnum in. We'll see how it loads up and looks in the game. Probably shouldn't have said that. Yeah, kind of. Uh, actually, it's pretty pretty close. So for that uh, donation card, I think, I think I've got the, I haven't goofed up the, no, I haven't goofed up the overlays for once, which is rare. Uh, when I say, um... Yeah, metal and purple. It'll be along these lines. It might be a slightly, just a teensy bit darker purple than this, but uh, yeah, this is. I like. I, I like this. Um, I like this color. Anyway, the vehicle. Uh, we haven't seen too many of uh, this body style go. Most cars opting for the newer styles. I think. I think you can get bigger tires. These are massive tires on here as well. So. Who knows? It's a good-looking car. I mean, it's, it's, you know, very much based on the on the Nissan. Uh, this comes from Tango. It is the Lonia Spry. I think that's how it's pronounced. Not sure. Uh, All-wheel drive i5 in this one. Uh, 340 horsepower, 232 torque. It isn't full-on carbon fibre that we have going on on the underneath, but it is uh, push rod at the back. Double wishbone at the front. I mean, it's fairly fa fairly advanced. Have we got actual brakes? Uh, yes, we've got massive brakes on here. Uh, that's oh, that, that's pretty good. Uh, my guess... Oh, tyres. What have we got? Tyres, semi-slicks. My guess is going to be a low 20, maybe high 90, although it's a bit heavy. I know, I'm going to go back with... Uh, I'm going to go back with a 120. 1,004 kilos, which, as we have seen is a little bit is a little bit tough to to get around here oh we've got some very soft suspension <laughs> we've got some very soft suspension although like, all of this guessing at the sort of time that uh, we're getting from the car there have been plenty of vehicles that have completely surprised me with their performance with their speed i, mean, I wouldn't have said a 17.4 from that last car i thought it might be quick but i don't know if it was quite going to be that fast this one might be be a touch on the wobbly side when I mean, you can see it that's <laughs> what a fast corner and the whole the whole vehicle is bucking now, this is a different issue to the wobbles we see from a lot of cars with the wheels this is actually sort of a soft suspension issue maybe uh, we're going to bounce around here makes it a little sketchy so of course when you dive on the brakes you get a lot of weight transfer forwards and I'm not quite sure what the car's going to do when I'm doing that, especially when you dive on the brakes, the weight goes forward, you unload the back of the car, and then if you have to steer to slightly correct something... Ooh, we also lock up a touch. Uh, that's fun. Uh, <laughs> it basically makes for an interesting, slightly difficult to drive car. Are we going to shake, wobble our way into another braking zone? A little bit. And slide through the next corner. It's a fun car to drive. It would be, would be good fun. Okay, that is considerably quicker than I thought it was going to be. Fair play, 19-3 on the first run, with a run that wasn't very good. It was a run that, well, it shook the car, it wibbled the car, I, it was slightly terrifying. Uh, <laughs> Temple are saying, this is a drunken devil's... Ear. That sounds about right. Um, that, that, that shall be its new nickname, I think. It shall be the drunken... the drunken Z. Uh, <laughs> it's, had, it's had one too many... It's had one too many. It's gone straight to its suspension, and now it can't go in a straight line properly. Well, no, straight line properly. It just can't go around corners properly without sort of, um, yeah, flapping. 
a little bit. Just just minor flappings, minor flappings. Uh, so, I mean, at the end of the day, the, the colour, as we all know from Gran Turismo, it's called Drunken Blue. Pur purple is is known as Drunken Blue from Gran Turismo 4. I can't even remember. It was, uh, was it a Mercedes of some description. I don't, even, I don't remember where it started, but basically anything purple is... Uh, now forever known as Drunken Blue, so it, it all fits together. That would explain why. Just, just stop, please stop shaking, car. It's another one that I feel could be very, very far. It, hell, this is a thousand kilos and going this fast. You shave a couple of hundred kilos off the weight and you stop it wobbling. You've got a hell of a. I mean, uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, you can say that about any vehicle. You know, a little bit more power, a little less weight, better grip. You know, a lot of things. Uh, to be going this fast though, at over a ton, admittedly only a smidge over a ton. Is good going. Is good going. The engine, it's another engine that I really like. It's got a nice immediate uh, throttle response. It is turbocharged, but don't really have any problems with turbo lag. Gear ratios are spot on for there always being a gear that's useful. It's a 19 2. And. I mean, we'll smack it into the wall. Um. Oh, it was a BMW that I could. <laughs> to be fair, there's, there's many cars I can't pronounce the colours of. But it might be the BMW that started the drunken blue thing. Uh, right, come on, I want an 18 out of this. I feel like there's an 18 in this, but we have got to try and get everything absolutely spot on. If we're going to get an 18, it's got to be perfect. And, well, perfection is a difficult thing for for fail race, especially considering I butchered up that turn one. We were a smidge early on the break. Oh, stop, stop shaking, stop shaking, stop shaking. Uh, we have sorted it out through the next corner. Uh, maybe it's not drunken. Maybe it's just not had its morning caffeine that it needs. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Whichever, whatever might be the cause of it, we have got to be a little mindful of the car trying to shake itself apart as we go around. Uh, say shake itself apart. It's. I think I'd rather deal with body movement like this than the wheels, because at least this doesn't have inconsistent brake issues. This doesn't stop the ABS from working when you're going to a corner or doesn't, well, terrify the crap out of you because the car will literally fall apart if you do donuts. It's a little bit disconcerting to watch it diving around in the braking zone. However, uh, uh, otherwise, yeah, it's not, not too bad whatsoever. 86 miles an hour down the back straight as we get a big lock up from the car. Uh, sh shouldn't really be doing, but there we go. Yeah, this is the other down. Let's say the other downside. This is the other thing that can go on with some of the uh, ABS-fitted cars. If they've got such powerful brakes, the ABS actually gets confused and will still have them lock up. Oh, that's a good final run. I don't know where on earth that time came from. Uh, <laughs> damn. Eighteen zero. It's almost another car. We've had a lot of fast cars run today. We've had a lot of very fast cars run today. Eighteen zero. I can't quite join the seventeen club. But, uh, that's pretty good going. That's, that's pretty good going. That's very good going. That's very good going indeed. Now, now is the moment you lot have been waiting for. Uh, <laughs> now is the moment you have all been waiting for, probably. So when the viewers... The viewer numbers plummet uh, once this vehicle. Maybe I'll just save it. Maybe we'll just keep saving it. We'll we'll have it the very last car to run. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's supposed to be bright yellow as well, which is um, it's a shame it doesn't load in. Well, it didn't load in like this when I was taking the thumbnail. Uh, <laughs> We'll see if it does load in. Oh, it has loaded in yellow this time around. Fantastic. So <laughs> this. This machine of I mean it's, it's it's a wing. This is this is a wing. Just a wing. Uh, <laughs> it comes from Game Boy 3800. It is the Mega Hyper Wing panel van. In fact, I have some issues with uh, the camera in that I I um I can't actually see basically. <laughs> Um, I can't see from the third person view and I don't have a way, I actually think I have a, uh, I can't get the camera, like there is a, I have a bind for the camera to zoom out, but it doesn't let work. So, right. We are going to have to drive from first person. There are exhausts coming straight out of the top. Uh, I mean, it's, it's impressive. 
what we have on this. Uh, I should, I'll give you some stats for the vehicle. Uh, it is actually 4x4 rather than all-wheel drive, so no idea how that's going to affect the vehicle. V8, naturally aspirated, uh, just under 200 horsepower, uh, 143 torque, and it weighs 1,051 kilos. So it is heavy, it is massively underpowered, and has a massive roof table. Or <laughs> Cactus Jones, thank you for the for the donation. So you can play tennis on there. Yes, yeah, you could. It's that it's got a tennis court on the roof. I mean, you could actually do a you could do a sensible remote control car race on the roof of this car. You'd have your own portable remote control race circuit. Now I like this is a good idea. This ah, you see, this is the future. This is this is the future I hit. We should probably go drive it, shouldn't we? Uh, I will try one from third person. Oh, that's not, uh, there. We go. I'll try one from third person. Uh, <laughs> probably won't be. Uh, probably won't be very good. But there we go. Uh, this is where it actually sets a surprisingly okay time. Uh, nope, nope. We don't. We don't really turn. Don't really turn very well through there. Uh, I'm just. I, mean, I think the wing is wider than the car, so if the wing fits uh, through... <laughs> the fact that the entire car is shaking. This might not actually fit through... I don't, it will fit through the, the gates, because the start line is one of these gates. So, it's fine. It will fit through the gates. Maybe. Christ. I can't see what's going on underneath the wing, and I don't think I want to. I don't think it's... I don't think good things are happening underneath the wing, essentially. Uh... <laughs> The amount of uh, shaking occurring, I don't think there are good things happening underneath, but we don't know. We know nothing of them. We might, well, I say we might not know if we hit something. If we stop steering, we probably have hit something, uh, basically. Uh-oh, uh-oh, no, stop. I'm, you are a boat. You are a complete and utter ferry. Again, it actually work fairly well as a ferry. There's enough space to park a car on the wing. Uh <laughs> That's giving me a silly idea. Oh, I don't know if we even hit that or not. I, I have no idea if we hit that or not. We do at least fit through there. We aren't the slowest car down the straight. Like, this will not be the slowest vehicle. And I can't believe I'm saying that. Oh, come on. Please turn. I think you nearly fell over. Just judging by the wing's position, I think you nearly fell over, but I'm not... Oh, brakes aren't very... Well, I say brakes aren't very good. Uh, <laughs> it does stop. This is going to beat the vampire, I think. Uh, <laughs> come on, oh wondrous table of many things. You are faster than the vampire. Oh, I've torn the wing off. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> I think the wings still somehow attach. Um, <laughs> that's a impressive thing. That is what that is. Uh, that is a seriously, seriously impressive thing right there. Uh. <laughs> uh, oh, we've got we've got the, uh, the the temple our bot is telling me we need to drink. Thankfully, I have got a drink ready and with me. I have got uh, I have orange orange squash. You know the most important of of drinks, right? Oh, I've got to get back from there. Forty one eight is actually not awful, which is the terrible thing. Forty one eight really is not awful. Uh. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go for a first person run now. So, see how much terrifying shaking there is in the vehicle. We are off and underway. Oh, wow, that's a lot of wobble from the exhausts. Uh <laughs> oh, dear. I, I am slightly concerned that I'm going to be using this viewpoint and everything is angry. Jeez, there's like random... <laughs> Depending on what angle you are, I mean, you you would have some like impressive. You could have some impressive if you don't even use the wing as a picnic table itself. You would have some imp like impressive shades or shade area that you could that you could use because of the wing. Please stop. Please stop. Please turn. We are going to. We are going to make the corner. Fantastic. And around this next bit, still the car judders its way through the turns. Uh, this might be the silliest car we've had. 
I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I do think that this is the silliest vehicle that we have had run through this course. Okay, first gear doesn't work. Second gear is going to to have to be where it is at. Uh, we are up to 50, the giddying heights of 56 miles an hour. Oh, uh, we got a roll coming off the banking. No, I'm actually really surprised this doesn't roll more. Second gear should probably work there. And big stop down into the hairpin. We go. Oh, that's a little too eager on the throttle. Oh, there we go. There's the roll. <laughs> it idles really funny. I don't think we can get up again, can we? <laughs> I think it's a bit wedged. Uh, I think it is a little bit stuck. I don't actually go. Can I do no grabber while I'm. Oh, I can do no grabber while I'm here. Uh, the wings still attack. I forgot that these cars are the heaviest things in existence. Uh, so there is that. Uh, whoop. Hey, the wings um, kind of survived. It's definitely not going to. Oh, no, it has actually put itself back on again. Still wouldn't be the slowest car in all of this as well. <laughs> um. Well, we have, as as Drift S FC3S says, I have now rolled a table as well. So, you know, we, we, we can roll everything. We can roll a hundred... Oh, uh, ah, what is that we're seeing? Oh, that's the, <laughs> that's the cameras on top of the, uh, on top of the gantry that are, um, poking over the top of the vehicle. Here we go! Mighty wing. Mightiest, mightiest of wings. Can we go? I mean, we're kind of going for a sub... Sub 140 is what we want here. We want a sub 140 out of you, ideally. And turn, 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 turn. There we go. I think it might actually be doable. Strangely, like, this is not too bad to drive. Like, it's... I say it's not too bad to drive. Like, it, it, it vibrates its way, it judders its way through a corner. Uh, but it has got a fairly good amount of acceleration. It has got a fairly good amount of... Even if it is juddering, it's still actually carrying some speed through the corners. And, of course, being all-wheel drive, or being 4x4, uh, it does have the ability to... Well, you just mash... Okay, you get some understeer, but... Uh, <laughs> It's not slither around like the big pickup was. Be oh, I think I might have actually knocked the wing off. I think I might have clipped the wing on something. This might be a problem now. Uh, this, might, this might be an issue. Okay. Don't know what's going to happen when we go through here. We might have a big crash. It's still going. Something has happened to the wing. Braking didn't quite work down there. But there we go. Uh, there's, still, there's still shade going on. So I think the wing's still attached in one form or another, which I just, I can't worry about the wing. Oh, I've actually clipped in the stick. Oh, why did I try to use a normal braking point down there? Because we're not in a normal car. Uh, it's still doing a little dance. Come on! Uh, hey, there's the wing! <laughs> I found, I don't know where... <laughs> The wing, we've found the wing. We've finished the rest of that. I guess maybe just because of the whole like, back end of the... Uh, Vehicle is so tall that it's, uh... Oh, now we've really glitched it. Uh... <laughs> and... There we go. Uh, it's a silly, silly vehicle. However, it is, um... Not the worst that I have driven, weirdly. It is, it is not the worst that I have driven. Now... We cannot put the... Well, we will put a car on the wing... But that will be at the end of the stream. I'm not gonna. I can't do it in this setting because it's set in time trial, and I'm not reloading this time trial. So we will do that at the end. That'll be the the final thing that we do in the stream. Normally we run a silly car around. Uh, <laughs> however, for for this stream we will end with a can we balance a car on the wing of this? I don't think the game is going to let us. However, we will see. Ewan, you missed it. You missed the mightiest of all wings going around the, uh, <laughs> around the course. Right. This, this, it is, it is the best 
the best of vehicles. Anyway, our next car to run is going to be something with a smaller wing. Uh, I just don't know if there is a wing. Is there a wing on this? Not sure. Guess we'll find out. No, it is. It is no wing at all on the back of it. Uh, this one comes from Loopy Sausage. It is called Convertible. Uh, rear wheel drive, flat four, naturally aspirated, 176 horsepower, 144 torque. It is quite heavy. It is. It is quite heavy. Um, 1,700 kilos. Power to weight ratio is not great. The tires are not semi slicks. It's going to be drifty type. Actually, quite a good looking car. It's, uh, I think, quite a quite a good looking vehicle. A fairly, a fairly realistic looking vehicle in many ways. Not sure it's going to be that fast around here. It's probably going to be. Well, we'll see. Okay. Brakes are actually pretty decent on this. We have got vented front and. I guess just normal discs rear, which are well. I mean, they're they're obviously a decent size because it is getting stopped. Okay, are we going to see? We're not seeing. There's a bit of the oversteer. Not quite seeing the maddest of oversteers that I was. I say fearing the maddest of oversteers that we might end up seeing from this car is not. It might be that it doesn't have enough. Uh, might not have enough power to uh, to be doing those but that that can be kind of helpful <laughs> we don't you know we don't be wasting time with the old sideways sideways stuff i will get my foot in there though because we can uh, i mean it's not bad to drive it's just not very fast uh, <laughs> it's not let's say it's not the first time this won't be the first car this is a more sensible I say realistic car it's not a ultimate ultimate autocross time attack vehicle it's on road tires you know I could imagine 176 horsepower engine would have been offered in a car such as such as this one uh, but when you are going up against cars that are a ton lighter with twice the power uh, you are not going to be setting the fastest time that being said, it is not going to go as slow as the Vampire if we get this wiggle through the final corners correctly. It's a 42! <laughs> it's about the same pace as the Mighty Wing, the Mega Hyper Wing Panel Van. To give it its full name, it is the... I mean, that goes to show you the power of all-wheel drive, really, around here. Uh, also, Cactus Jones, thank you for the for the super chat. Uh, just saying F, I guess, for the Mighty Wing. I hope we've all paid respects to the to the Mighty Table Wing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all-wheel all drive traction when it comes to getting out of out of corners around here is just it's so. I say needed to go. No, it's not needed to go fast, but you are ultimately you are always going to uh, go quicker when you can get the power down immediately. Uh, yeah, this isn't too terrible in terms of the real drive cars we've seen. Uh, it's certainly not going to be the slowest. It's not the slowest car we've seen. Those are well over two minutes. So you know you've got <laughs> you've got that going for you. It could be it could be a lot worse. Uh, we're going to oh have some big old. Big old understeer through there. That's actually one of the corners where it's most most noticeable. Oh, we're gonna have some wiggling. Yeah, it's a little just a smidge of wiggling from the car. I mean, this is a nice sort of relaxing vehicle to drive, having had the silly wobble death machine with the table tennis. Uh, no, table tennis is not even that. That's much. It was much bigger than a table tennis table on the roof of that thing. It was. It was a full-on tennis court slash remote control car race circuit whatever the hell you wanted it to be really whatever the hell you wanted it to be uh, <laughs> you could have done you know the, the um helicopter landing challenge clarkson did with the yeti like that would have fitted like a chinook on the top of it uh, <laughs> not just as just not, not a small light helicopter that could have got full-on military grade helicopter or it could be an apache gunship sort of uh, landing pad pretty sure that would fit 
probably a mod for that that I haven't got. There are a fair few aircraft around for B. A41, I think we beat the uh, table wing now. I think we beat the uh, table wing. I can't actually remember. I don't remember the, uh, the car that, that ran last time. I don't remember what it was speed-wise. It was around there. I think we've gone a little quicker. Uh, <laughs> Can we do a sub... I don't think we can do a sub-40. Uh, it would be... I don't know where I could... Like if, if I could find, I mean, many, many runs with the car, maybe I could. You know, the ultimate challenge is always having just these three runs. To try and find another second, I'm not sure where I'm going to get it. Maybe, actually, the, the biggest place we're going to find will be the... After the first tiny straight, that quick... Say that quick, it's like a 40 mile an hour corner, but the right hander where we've had some big understeer moments. If I get that right with this, we might be okay. We might be able, that's where we might be able to find some time here. We don't understeer a million miles wide. I mean, we just we simply can't carry any corner speed through there. However, it's better than running as wide as we have been previously. Uh, can we get turned here get on that power again i'm trying to cut out any oversteer if i can in a car like this uh oversteer is going to cost you like momentum is going to be so important we've got to keep up the momentum without wasting it as sliding we don't want we don't want any sideways movement that could be being used for the old forward well for the old forward lack of speed really but uh <laughs> You know, at least we're not rolling coming off the banking. That's something. I guess you see how much you're wiggling the wheels trying to keep it from uh, sliding in a couple of places around here. Oh, I might be a smidge early on the brakes there, but at least it is all neat and tidy through here. Second gear should be flat towards the line. Oh, it's a 40.4. We almost got it. Uh, <laughs> Needed another four tenths. Oh, I don't think there's much more. I did what I could. I did what I could with it. Um... Yeah, I think it's quite a good looking, quite quite a good looking car. Quite a, again, it's a it's a sensible, more sensible real world vehicle. I feared it could have been quite oversteery. There was enough grip in the car, and it ended up just being a little slow. It beat the table wing. You know, it's not embarrassed by the table wing. Uh, so <laughs> there we have it. Oh, we're not on. There we go. We'll bring that menu back up. And we will go for the next car. Right, our next vehicle is the CMD Motorsport Mark 1, although it's not named that. I did have a check. Uh, it's this thing. This will be our next vehicle. It looks okay. I mean, it looks pretty good on paper, but it's heavy. And that's always the... Actually, we're, we're having a real heavyweight session we are having a real heavyweight session here. Uh, Captain Zoll asking what ran a 111. Uh, that was a Formula 1 car. And I only ran it once. I crashed it on every other run. It's very difficult to drive a Formula 1 car around here because it's either wheel spinning or no grip. Uh, this, I'm thinking the texture might not have loaded in properly. It looks kind of cool in all carbon fibre. I mean, I'm not a big lover of carbon fibre cars. Uh, <laughs> however, <laughs> it does look kind of cool. Uh, let's turn off the ESC. Reset the thing. Right. This car comes from 35 CMD 34. Uh, it is the CMD Motorsport Mark 1. Turbocharged i5 powering it. All-wheel drive. Just shy of 500 horsepower. Uh, 440 torque as well. That's a lot of torque, actually. We're not seeing many cars getting that, uh, that level of torque. However, it is heavy. 1,300 kilos. Very, very large tyres. Might see some potential issues with the old wobbling from the car. Uh, <laughs> guess we will have to wait and see how it's going to fare with that. But yeah, we've got very, very large tyres going on around here. Push rod. Re actually, all push rod. Uh, <laughs> full on, full on push rod. Uh, Drift say reminds me of the Burnout Paralyzed Carbon Edition cars. Yes, that is very much actually. I hadn't really thought about that, but... Um, yeah, it is uh, 
pretty pretty damn cool uh also gt effect thank you very much for the donation uh saying that's red ready on actually i don't quite know why but uh <laughs> there we go uh shall we go racing i think as fast as this car could be it's gonna be too heavy i'm betting at about a 119 mid 119 does the engine even this is one of the quietest engines I think I have... Oh, I didn't... What the bloody hell went on with the... Things have gone weird. Oh, I know what's gone weird. I pressed the wrong button. Okay, I managed to slow down time. Uh, <laughs> that's why things have gone weird. Never mind. Here we go. Uh, that would explain why things were a little bit strange. Uh, <laughs> okay. Got very... For a one well for an over a ton car that is uh, actually not terrible on the old turning front that's actually really not that bad through the corners it might have the power and torque to get away with it the grip is fairly good uh, we haven't got uh too much in terms of the old shaky wheels a little bit of oversteer got away with carrying speed thanks to the oversteer yet the really technical sections we can get away with the sort of stop start hairpins it's when we start getting towards the more flowing sections of the circuit which they're kind of like down here for example this is where we might see oh we're gonna go wandering there we might see the um issues kicking in for the heavier cars oh i actually stopped a little bit um a little bit too soon. I mean, it's nice to have power. We've actually barely even warmed up the front brakes. <laughs> that's, how, well, that's how powerful the front brakes are, right? So we've got to have it. And that's not a surprise. The big, big turbo cars here. 2021-2. 20, um, we've got to have it in the right gear. This has got a silly, silly turbo going on. And if we are in the wrong gear at the wrong time, it's not going to move a single bit. So... <laughs> Uh, that's a interesting, interesting thing. I say to, to have to deal with. Yeah, the real, the real problem with this car will not be the turbos. It'll be trying to get it around the tighter corners. I don't think I want big oversteer through all of there if we can help it. Um, I mean, the, the full carbon look. I'm pretty sure is just the game loading the textures in slightly wrong. Uh, it's almost like it's a little bit too darker a carbon fiber we've got it just kind of looks like a void in places like there for example depending on where the sun is are we gonna have another big oversteer moment through here i'd rather not i want that control there we go have the control and uh we are oh that was second wasn't it and that wanted to be first this is the issue with the big turbos that you get on the cars you're constantly faffing around or you can be it's, that's a set. this isn't the worst we've had for turbo lag surprisingly uh it is a very very big turbo we've got on the car but it is not the worst come on well we got straight line speed out of you you are a heavier car 82 miles an hour I mean, this this goes to show the speed of the little 600 kilo car I've forgotten the name of it um l l l r or something uh that only had 200 horsepower but because it was only 600 kilos, it was going as fast as this down the straight, and then it only had 600 kilos to move through the corners. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, like power to weight ratio wise between this car and the uh, LLA is almost identical, actually, because that was just under 200 horsepower, and this one is you know, just over 400 horsepower, but it was half the weight, essentially. So it's got half the power, but it's half the weight. And that was in the 17s. <laughs> so. 20.0 is not bad. There might be room for improvement. There might be room for a 19. But ultimately, yeah, the lightweight is the way to go with these with these vehicles. Although too light can also cause issues. Uh, certainly too light and rear-wheel drive is very difficult to drive around here. Uh, <laughs> too, too light and rear-wheel drive does end in... I mean, I say disaster ends in scary times. That is for sure. We're going to run a 
smidge wide there, yes. But I think we can get away with it. Come on, turn, 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 turn. And launch towards this next corner. Go. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, this is another one of those cars that is okay. It's kind of, oh, that's a lot of oversteer out there. It's, it's, I'm, sure, I'm not trying to find time, which means pushing the vehicle in silly, in silly manners. It's okay. It's just lacking a little bit of something to really put it up towards the uh, top of the top, top of the table. I think this runs god. Slight overdriving of one corner is all it takes. Again, little mistakes around here. I, I think the 20 was pretty good. I'm not sure we have got too much more that I can get out of the car around here. No, oh, big oversteer moment as well. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, I kind of used the weight transfer to tip the car back the other way, but no. <laughs> uh. Not quite, not quite, not quite fast enough. I, as I said, it's a fun car to drive, but ultimately it is uh, just not quite quick enough. A little too heavy for the old, for the old autocross course. Right. Up next, uh, what have we got? We're going to probably be drifting. We are probably going to be drifting because it's rear wheel drive, quite powerful. Here it is. Uh, there's a lot of cars named Jackal or some relation to Jackal in uh, in all of this for I say for whatever reason. Um, you we don't want do not want the uh, not allowed the ESC on. So I'm gonna have a quick drink actually before we'll talk about this car in a minute. I'm just gonna have a quick drink because I'm thirsty. Right. It does kind of look a little bit like kind of an Iron Man car. I don't know if that was the intention. It kind of got the Vortex. I think they are just aerials, but they make it look like Vortex generators on the top. Uh, <laughs> to plus saying I didn't order you to hydrate. Well, I hydrate when I want to. Sometimes I listen to hydrate bots. Oh, we've got, we've at least got semi-slicks on this. So, the car, this comes from Robo Player 1. It is the Jackal Elite. Rear wheel drive, I6. Naturally aspirated, 286 horsepower, uh, 183 torque. Again, it's another heavier car. Uh, 100, sorry, 1,104 kilos. So, I reckon we will be a drifty car. Ooh, it's like a full-on space frame and everything going on down here. Um, I'm I'm thinking we're going to be very very sideways. Uh, you would say Austin Austin Healy three thousand crossed with an E type. Yeah, certainly the front is very Austin. The front is very Austin Healy. I'm not sure about. I guess maybe a little bit of uh, E type in the in the back, but certainly yeah, the front is a very very much Austin Healy. In fact, uh, Christopher M K say it was like a it was like the modified Austin Healy uh, Hot Wheels car. Right. Are we going to be a... Oh. Okay, we've got very, very short gear ratios. Uh, huge amounts of revs. Oh, don't want to quite go over that. Yeah, we're going to be a drifty car, aren't we? It's going to be a drifty, shaky car again. <laughs> uh, that's... That's... I mean, not ideal. Okay, you can see how much the entire... I don't know what is actually causing the car shake in this. Might be even too stiff for a suspension. Like there, that's a very. Like I'm, I'm looking at the. Um, it's like skid marks and the way the car is. I don't know. It is peculiar. It is. Pe oh, catch. <laughs> uh, it's it's a strange. It's acting in a strange way. Unless it's like wheel hop. Possibly, I guess. If the wheels are just, if if there's the wheels start skidding over the road, they're kind of fighting grip and then letting go, and it is essentially 
jumpy. Uh, I've not had a car quite jump around in that manner before. Uh, we're up to 80 miles an hour down that uh, back straight, which, considering all of the traction issues, is still pretty fast. I mean, 80 is around the average of the uh, cars, so considering all of the issues that we have going on with the vehicle, that's all. Oh, Come on, behave yourself now. We're going to be slippy, slidey, oversteery. Hey, oh, no. No. You've been eating. Oh, I think. Did we get that? We did get the finish line. It's fine. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it did get captured a little bit. Dastardly concrete barriers and everything. Um, yeah, there is some some peculiar peculiar handling things uh, going on with the cars. I noticed someone saying they thought the shaking was from wheels catching on bodywork. As far as I'm aware that doesn't actually do anything in the game from everything I have everything I've seen uh, it doesn't really matter. We've had cars, yeah, cars that have had wheels clipping through bodywork have shaken however plenty of cars that don't also shake. I think it's more to do with the way the wheels are set up, to do with the way the uh, suspension is set up, and to do with the tyres that uh, that cause the issue more than clipping bodywork. Basically, this one, I'm not sure. Uh, this one is this one is very unlike all of the other cars that have. Uh, it's unlike all the other cars that have had shaking issues, and its juddering is entirely different to all of the other cars. It is a new one. After all of these episodes and parts and streams and whatnot, we are still finding cars with weird, peculiar and strange new failings. And, well, I say failings and quirks, shall we say. Oh, yeah. It literally just wiggles its bum when you go to put the power down. And not in the side-to-side -side way, the up-and-down way. Uh, <laughs> which we've never had in a car before. <laughs> To have a strange, strange little car. Uh, actually kind of fast, if we didn't spin. Ah, too much speed into there. I say kind of fast. I mean, for a rear-wheel drive car, it is not too... It's not too bad. Going sub-30 might be doable, but it's not going to challenge the 22s and 21s of the fastest rear-wheel drive cars. Perhaps weren't expecting it to. Ultimately, it's going to have a tough time. Oh, some of those cars are pretty, pretty, um, pretty beastly. We're going to have, uh, we are going to have understeer all the way through there. Oh, nearly took out the pillar. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, this run is a little bit of a bust. Again, the funny thing is, is that this is still going to go quicker than oh, some of the cars that, um, that we have seen. Okay, it's still far quicker than the Vampire, and that was with a silly spin along the way, so... Yeah, we might just possibly uh, go a sub... a sub 130 if I can get everything right, which is going to be difficult. Stop spinning your wheels, you... <laughs> silly, silly machine. Um... Uh, for Juggernaut asking, no, your your brake fade mobile has not gone. Uh, your brake fade mobile. I'm not looking forward to a brake fade mobile. We've had a couple of cars with sketchy braking, uh, but no, the the brake fade ve vehicle is uh, still to still to run. Are we going to have? Uh, okay, this we've still got. We've still got the uh, wiggling car. Never mind the twerk stallion. We we've got the uh, we've got the twerk jackal here. I think that should this this is the perfect name for this car, and it could probably even do the driftings with the Twerk Stallion if it wanted to. Uh, it's definitely not got the grip. It's not as good as the um, Turbo I4 car. I, I think that I think it was actually just called the Turbo I4 or something uh, that went the all-wheel drive car that had so much understeer. The only way to drive it was to just chuck it around the corners and. That was very oversteer. It was quite easily to control doing it because it was all-wheel drive. But uh, that will still and forever be the uh, best oversteery weirdness that we could have. Oh, we're going to be okay through there, aren't we? And try and be neat and tidy here. It's 
very, very difficult to be neat and tidy in this car when it just wants to do that. Stop it. Stop it. Hey! Oh, we did a sub-31. <laughs> uh, 30.999. I mean, this. It, I, I like the time. Well done. Uh, <laughs> well done. Um, you and you and saying the Robot Wars video finally done. Uh, uh, the last two weeks, the fun and games I have had with with YouTube, that will be. So the video, the um, uh, what's it called the. I completely lost where I was going with my train of thought. It's just derailed and fallen over. Uh, yeah, I had three videos with massive YouTube issues. The Robot Wars 1 and 2 Beam videos um, in completely different ways. I've never had a video entirely fail. I've had videos that haven't been sent to sub boxes properly. I've never, ever had a video entirely, entirely be unfindable when being published for half an hour. Uh, <laughs> that is a new one. And... Yeah, I, 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 who knows, really. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to do anymore. It, it's got, it's got, it's got to the. I mean, it, it's got to a silly point now. It's, it's gone well beyond. It's gone well beyond a joke. It's gone to career destroying slash life destroying levels of difficulty dealing with it. Um, because yeah, there is not much, not much that uh, that can be done with uh, YouTube's assholery, and that is definitely a proper adjective and not something that I made up. Uh, <laughs> Ro Roboty, uh, say for the next robot arena video, you should uh, try the vanilla game. The enemy robots are easier to beat and simpler. Uh, I am, I've been playing around with different versions of Robot Arena to find one that. Uh, that I that I like. I say one that I like. One that I can perhaps do a little bit better on while I learn the game a touch. Um, and yeah, I have got a vanilla, more vanilla version of the game working. So I might try playing around on that a little bit to have some more entertaining entertaining battles and stop silly OP bots until I learn how to build silly OP bots myself. And if we want to build a two and a half meter spinner, it'll actually work. Well, I mean, <laughs> kind of. Anyway. Anyway, our next vehicle is an interesting vehicle, this, actually. Uh, this comes from uh, G Racer X. It is the Hustler Backyard Engineering V10. Uh, it's, a, as I said, it's an interesting-looking car, truck. I kind of quite like it, though. It's got side-exit exhaust. It's got a wing on the top. Uh, <laughs> interesting use of lights. The We, we are going to shake the car apart those wheels it's not going to go very well also i imagine this and speed bumps would have issues just a smidge anyway all-wheel drive v10 powering this 322 horsepower 213 torque it's you know an okay amount of power it's a fairly okay i say fairly okay a good engine uh 1164 kilos though does make it a touch heavy I'm okay. I'm going. To, I'm going to do the game of guess how, how fast the car is going to go, and I reckon a 21. I might be wrong. It does sound impressive, but I am reckoning a 21 is probably where it's going to sit. Although, and it's actually better through the corners than I thought. I was worried about it being very, very difficult to drive through the corners. Uh, the pushrod suspension doesn't really know what to... To be fair, I can't think of many trucks, many pickups that are built with pushrod suspension. So, I, you know, I can't criticise the game. I can't criticise the game too much for... <laughs> I say that. But, yeah, not many trucks are built this low with pushrod suspension at the rear. Um, I mean, the wheels are clipping through everything at the... At the front. See, this doesn't actually have any wheel vibration issue, which is surprising considering pushrod suspension has tended to be where we've seen the worst of the uh, wheel shakes. It does judder a little under braking. I'm not quite sure what is uh, causing it to do that under braking. Right, straight line speed. What are we doing? Vehicle. Oh, okay, we will have to go up to fourth. Uh, it's probably doing about 80. Uh, <laughs> Probably about 80. It's 
You know, it's got good power. It sounds great. It's got good good power, just not the best power to rate ratio. Uh, it is good handling, though. I will, I will give it that for what is a considerably heavier vehicle in the context of this series. D not a bad guess for the first run. And we tore the rear wheel off. Not a bad guess for the first first run. <laughs> 21. I think we can probably do a mid to low 20s. Might even possibly get a 19, but it would have to be absolutely spot on. And uh, me and absolutely spot on are a difficult thing to uh, <laughs> to achieve, essentially. We have another stop into turn one. Yeah, I'm... I've been impressed by a few of these a few of these vehicles that have handled way better than I would expect them to. Again, it's not going to match the 600, the 600 kilo car that had only 100 less horsepower than it. That's half the weight and, you know, power to weight ratio is very much skewed into the little uh, LLA's favour. But it doesn't handle, this doesn't handle like a, I say, like 1,100 kilos is not actually that heavy, not, com not for modern cars. But it's all relative to what you're what you're running, and this does not feel like a big heavy pickup truck. It is still pretty reasonable, and we are not seeing yeah we're not seeing the wheel shakes. I will try after this because I am curious whether this will be a car that can tear its own wheels off. So we will do the donut test where <laughs> with the car to see if it does have the ability to uh, tear its own wheels apart. The fact that it's not really showing me anything here suggests that it'll probably. Probably not, but there we go. It's a new, it's a new take your bets audience. Do you reckon the truck is going to tear its wheels apart when we do a donut test? And oh, it's almost into the 19s. Bing. <laughs> uh, actually, it rode the, uh, it rode that hit pretty well. I thought we were going to twist the whole back of the truck apart, but nope, nope. The truck was absolutely fine. 20.1. Probably be the fastest truck, actually. Come to think of it, the SUV was the SUV record. I think it was a 21 uh, for one of the SUVs that ran in the first stream I did on here. Uh, so yeah, this is probably the fastest truck slash no, fastest first first certainly fastest pickup truck beats the SUVs and so on, which is good going, just won't beat the ultra serious, uh, you know, track cars, funnily enough. Uh, we'll have semi-slick tyres, I'm pretty sure doing 20s, you've pretty much got to have semi-slick tyres on the car, if you are going, <laughs> if you go, if you're going to make it that fast, you are going to be, oh, I mean, this actually beats my Kestrel's um, opening run. I have, okay, I think I've talked about this in, in previous streams, I have since run the Kestrel once again through this course, and the Kestrel is capable of in the 17s. At the very end of the series, I am going to run the Kestrel three more times and see what I can do with it. Because um, I'm curious myself, as I've learnt, you know, more of the course. And, you know, to be fair to the first cars, I think about episode four, I was starting, I'd started to get the hang of some slightly sneaky alternate lines too, to make up a little bit of time. So, yeah, it's always going to be the way. Like, you, you can't you'll learn a course but then you'll you know the more runs you'll always learn more about it so uh yeah the first few cars are always at a little slight disadvantage shall we say and yeah ultimately there is potentially more speed in those and my kestrel will will have its have its chance at some point to uh <laughs> to go a little bit faster with sneakier cleverer lines ah oh, i just can't do it <laughs> I, I just I just can't do it, and it's 20.5. I, I know where I was a little bit wide on a couple of places there. Just couldn't quite make it. Uh, right, let's go and see. So, the bet on what will happen when we donut this. Is it going to tear its wheel apart? Uh, I've seen a few, a few people reckoning it will. Uh, let's go and find out, shall we, uh, if it is. First of all, we've got to get it spinning. Are you going to judder yourself apart? Um, nope. That's not going to do it. That's not even attempting to. <laughs> that is actually pretty impressive to have to have got that size 
wheels and no shaking. That is a good setup car. That is a good setup car. Well, good setup truck, if you like. So, <laughs> fair, fair play. Fair play to G Razor X. That's for 1,100 kilos. That is doing pretty damn well. Uh, right. This. We are now going to go and mess around with putting a car on top of the. On top of the table wing. Because uh, I don't know how long it's going to take. So. <laughs> We could also do some really quite impressive, like, wide donuts. <laughs> this is a interesting vehicle. This is a very interesting vehicle. I like. I really like it actually. It's quickly becoming one of my uh, one of my favourite vehicles that we've run through here, just for reasons of silliness. We've got a tiny bit of bodywork flexing going on. Uh, <laughs> But nothing from the wheels. I mean, that with rear-wheel drive would be interesting. Uh, <laughs> right, okay. We will go back to the uh, the main menu. And we will load up. Uh, where are we going to load up the table wing? You know what? We're going to load up the automation test track. So I'm going to see how far I can get around the test track with the uh, pigeon on the roof. <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to hazard a guess that the pigeon won't actually sit on top of the table. I don't think the car... I don't think the collision detection will be there. And I think if we do drop it on the table, I'm pretty sure the wing will snap. But there is only one way to find this out. And that is to give it a try. Uh, <laughs> we can try the A86 on the table as well. The pigeon stands more chance of not breaking everything. If it works with a the pigeon, then we'll put the Toyota on it. Uh, <laughs> if it works with a the pigeon, then then we can get the Toyota on it. If it, as I expect, glitches the entire game, uh, <laughs> you know, then then maybe not. If you are just joining the stream, uh, I welcome you. You are about to witness some silliness that is not quite what we were intending on doing today. However, chat wanted to see it, so. <laughs> Here we go. What do we reckon, audience? What are the chances of this working? I mean, I've, I've got to say, as much as I would love this to work, the chances of this working are piddly. The chances of this actually being a thing that works are tiny. Um... Ooh, I've got weird mods. When did I have all of these? When did I download that? Will it crash the game? Probably. When did I do it? Where did that come from? I don't know when that came from. The <laughs> These might break my game. I'll be honest. They'll probably break my game. But. Uh... There's a lot of noise coming from that uh, that table. Okay, so what we're going to have to do with this. I'm going to have to do this from. It's actually going to be really, really difficult to to lift this up because there's no uh will it balance from this point okay so it does oh sorry i've twanged the pigeon uh <laughs> hold on pigeon okay you i've got a little bit too powerful a uh, mode grower because that's from rolling over the table wing that is quite heavy right now very 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 gently lift this over and i've got to do very little movements with everything oh stop twanging the pigeon around the problem is i've got to be able to pick up the pigeon enough to actually you know carry it and things okay pigeon stop dancing stop dancing please stop dancing uh i don't think setting a spawn point because the spawn point will drop a car and i have a horrible feeling that's going to have issues dropping a vehicle on top uh, I just want to stop a pigeon dancing, and then we'll be happy. Okay, there, there was... This is like a very delicate procedure on Kerbal Space Program where you're trying to dock a space station bit. Drop! I mean, it's kind of on. <laughs> quick, quick, does it drive? Here is the important question. Um... Does work! It does actually work. 
Oh, hey, it made it down the straight ever so slightly. It did make it ever so slightly down the straight. <laughs> Perfect. I see nothing wrong with it. I don't actually think the wing has any sort of uh, collision detection. I'm pretty sure the wing doesn't have any collision detection at all. I can try in the end. I'm just going to move this as far forward as I can. I think it's just the vehicle sits on top. I don't know if it's going to break my game at all or what it's going to do. Uh, no, we are going to be okay with this. Um, I think it just sits on top of the uh, wing slightly. But... Oh, we're... Car? What on earth has this done? Um... There's a reason why I don't tend to do this. And for some reason, this has gone all sorts of dopey. Why are you not... Why are you moving in such a large... Somebody who knows how things work. Let me know why this... Doesn't let me move it in small little increments. It used to. I don't remember how. But there we go. Uh, maybe toggle that off. Ah, there we go. Grid snapping was on. There we go. Figured it out. Uh... <laughs> Thank you. I, Ul Ulrich has got there with Disable the Grid. I figured it out. Of course, there is always a delay between what I say and what goes on in the uh, in the stream. Uh, so thank you to those who did uh, who who did who did let me know how to fix it. Right now, I don't know whether we can rest this on the top or not. So that looks actually pretty spot on. I might move it just a touch further back. Just a smidge. Just a smidge further back. Uh, also, Cactus Jones, thank you very much for the for the super chat. There wasn't actually a message in it, but this is greatly appreciated. Okay, Pigeon Table is now about as good as it's going to be in terms of positioning. So we're going to come out of that. Audience, prepare for physics, well, unhappiness. Grumpy physics are a go! Yeah, basically, the pigeon goes through the wing. However, it does sit on the roof uh, of the car beneath it. <laughs> We're going. We're going. Oh, okay. We can't turn. We can't turn a corner. Oh dear. Oh, we've broken reality a little bit. Oh no. What have we done? I knew this was a bad idea. Uh, can we escape? Don't go into the black hole. Don't go into the black hole. Don't go into the black hole. Uh, <laughs> quickly, if we don't look at it, it's not going to cause us issues. We're still okay to run on three wheels, right? Ish. Oh, okay. Yeah. But <laughs> I think we broke everything. <laughs> I very much think we might have... Just slightly teensy weensy broken everything. Okay, so if we're gonna reset that, I know it's gonna cause issues. Oh, I can't. I now can't reset. I guess actually, no, if we pause physics, we can probably reset everything. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, essentially, we can have the pigeon on the table. We can have it, well, we can have it on top of the car. We can't have it on top of the table. The wing does not have the uh, collision detection for it. Just wonder if I could pull that pigeon forwards. It might be able to sit on... There we go. It now looks like a pigeon with wings. Or maybe a pigeon with... Um, like a, a boat. A float? Floaty boat. You know what I mean, right? Uh, <laughs> I love how we managed to entirely destroy Beam in about four minutes and... 420 yards. It wasn't even that because that was 200 yards from the first one. So, <laughs> did, did, didn't take much. Uh, can we go now with a pigeon slightly better balanced on the roof? Can we move further? Here we go. We've got to try. We've got to make the corner. Can we make turn one here? It's like a silly GTA challenge where you've got people standing on the roof of your car and you can only move it like a tiny, tiny, tiny speed. Otherwise, they fall off. Oh, we're doing it. We are actually maybe going to make... We made a corner. Can we make a second corner? This is the littlest steering movement you can possibly do. Teensy, teensy steering movements. Hey! hey. <laughs> we are making actual progress. 
around the circuit with the pigeon on the roof. Who betted that this would be a thing that we could manage? No, 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 don't shake around. Uh, we're up to 30 miles an hour. We're almost, we are now starting to break the speed, well, a speed limit somewhere. I, I think if a police officer saw you with a pigeon on the roof of your, I mean, fair, if a police officer saw you with this wing on the top of your car, he would probably want to talk to you, or she. Um, a pigeon probably is not going to make anything, anything different in that scenario. Oh, I'm trying to be really careful. Like, I, I didn't want to yank on the steering, so we are going to fall off the circuit having been going 30 miles an hour. Uh, it actually is quite well stuck on the top here. I am impressed. I'm kind of tempted to see, oh, how fast can we go? But then I'm also going to suspect that it'll fall off if we try the, oh, how fast can I happen to go? Uh, <laughs> um, I think I, uh, we should be okay through... Uh, right hand. I think left hand corners are the worst because the rear of the car is. Oh, so don't bounce now. Oh, we might be alright if the pigeon's wheel is stuck through the door. I don't really want to turn left. And I do know we are coming up towards a fast left hander. I don't know. Maybe, no, maybe left. Maybe it's right actually. Yeah. So right. Sorry, is, is the worst. The left, I think the wheel will just hit into the. Um, we have to. 60 mi Oh, it's shaking. Stop wobbling. Uh-oh. Oh, no. It's gone. I tried to catch it. Didn't catch it. We rugby tackled it. And the wings vanished. How have we lost a wing that size? Could anybody please explain where the bloody hell my wing went? I mean, if I found where the pigeon went. Where'd the wing go? <laughs> Where is the wing? Um. <laughs> did it ping around somewhere? Or did it just fall through the floor? I can't see a big yellow wing sticking out. And let, let's be honest, the chances are you'd notice it. It's, it's not It's not an easy thing to miss that. I just think it's got, I think it's got in the void somewhere. Down here. Could be anywhere. Could just be still falling somewhere. We need a... We need a wing camera, basically. <laughs> I bet the pigeon still works fine as well. Oh, this was, I thought this was a drift pigeon, so it's got like a silly engine. <laughs> it's probably got a silly engine and a... Oh, let's not maybe not take it on the dirt road. It's actually not too unstable either. Well, what is up here? I don't think I've ever been to this bit of the map. Pigeon? We're exploring! We are a drift pigeon inside a dat. We are drifting a pigeon that's being carried around half a lap on the top of it. If I finish that sentence, it's... I mean, it's, yeah, that sentence started out pretty weird. We're drifting a pigeon through a dam and the pigeon had fallen off a bridge after being carried around on a wing the size of a tennis court for half a lap. It's a little... I'll be honest, it's a little bit twitchy. It's a little bit twitchy a vehicle, this. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, does it actually... Uh, it's, I mean, it's not the most controllable drift vehicle, but... Oh, it's just got a big chunk taken out of the door as well. So, to answer the all-important questions of can you carry a pigeon around on the roof of the table... Yeah, kind of. I will just try, because people want to see if we put an A86 on the roof. We'll give it a go. This might actually sit on the roof better, but I think it will also fall off a lot better. So, <laughs> let's go and see what happens. I suspect I'll have to shuffle it around in the editor. Oh, you've spawned on the floor. Cool. We can we can fix that, though. Uh, we can We can fix that. We have the power. To. Are you on the actual... Ah, you are on that. Cool. Where... Oh, bugger. Uh, where has your little... Oh, why is it over there? Why is your dingly dongly over that bit? Also, uh, we need the twisty turny bit. There we go. 
For some reason, it's like center point is a mile off. Don't know. Uh, don't know. Don't ask questions. Don't ask questions. Uh, also, I'm sorry to anyone who is a fan of said car because I am going to inevitably destroy it. Uh, oh, throw the floor again. Uh, yeah, there will inevitably be some some destruction here. See, the table wing doesn't look that big when you've got it uh, compared to a normal car. I mean, I say that. No, it, it does look it does look very big. However, uh, <laughs> it doesn't look quite as catastrophically large as it could do. I think that's going to have to do. And then we're going to have to because I'm trying to balance the car so that it'll actually sit. I might have to go back a teensy bit actually. There. Okay. Are we ready for another tremendous physics ball of pain? Um, right. Here we go. I mean, it's definitely heavier. It's definitely heavier than the pigeon. You notice the impact on the vehicle below. I mean, I could... I mean, technically, I could now weld it to the roof, but then I could also weld everything to the roof. So, <laughs> you know, this is just a game of balancing. How far can we carry this around before it falls off? I think this might be better in the way that its weight is distributed and everything. It's still a little bit far to the... Oh, no, 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 no. Can we do the... Oh, we can't do the shuffle that we used to be able to do. God damn it. The shuffle from the old transport races on GTA 5. I mean, it's probably a little bit better than the Pigeon, but it's also heavier than the Pigeon. So, you kind of can, um, can kind of not. I think to end, to end the stream, we shall finish with... I mean, it only seems... Only seems right, really, that... Uh, <laughs> We should give the uh, give the Toyota a quick crash test and test the the structural integrity of the of the mightiest of wings. Uh, oh, let's go for a hundred times slower so I can move the camera around. Uh, <laughs> it is the silliest crash test ever conducted. Oh, where's the wing gonna go? Is the wing is the wing gonna do the proper cartoon? Oh, it's not quite. It's gonna twist slightly. I think the truck's twisted from the crash. It almost did the proper cartoon, like the wing stayed stationary as the car continues to go forward. Didn't quite disappointing. I do love though that the wings come off as one clean entity. <laughs> I do like that. That's quite funny. Uh, I'm gonna hazard a guess that the. To be fair, I think the Toyota will probably be okay. I think that will still drive after this. It actually has rolled the uh, the yellow banana of wingness. That has fallen over. I should just realise there's like a full-on space frame everywhere. Uh, <laughs> wings off to the pit lane. Ooh, we've given it a lot of toe. That's a lot of a lot of toe. In or out? I don't just can't remember which bit measures the toe. Whether it's the yeah. Oh, it might actually land back on its wheels again though. Uh, <laughs> come on, table wing goodness. Hey, it did land it on its wheels. Now, this I think is still going to be perfectly okay to drive. It won't be the best car I've ever driven. It looks a little bit wobbly. Can we turn left? Yep. Uh, sorry, can we turn right? Yes, yeah, so we can turn left. So I would say that this is still a fully functioning vehicle after that crash. It has lost the wing and most of its side panels from where the wing was connected to it. Do we reckon this still runs? <laughs> yes, it, it does. Somehow, I don't know how that... Uh, there he goes. <laughs> I was going to say, how on earth did that rear axle not snap? Now it has snapped, and now the diff's not going to let it do anything. So, of the two cars, the, uh... Well, funnily enough, the truck the, the truck survived better. Also, I could... We've got to finish off with an even bigger crash. Do I still have it installed? I don't know whether I do. <gasps> we do still have it installed. <laughs> okay.
this will be the end. This will be the end of the stream. A proper send off. A proper set. Oh. Oh, bugger. It doesn't work anymore, though. Oh. Okay, no, it, it's, it's just invisible. That's fine. The wheels are invisible. It's a bit broken. I don't know why. I'm not. Probably some mod conflict. I probably need to clear the cache or something, or some mod conflicting. This is a very old mod. It does still at least drive, so here we go. Uh, I think we're lined up for it. <laughs> I think we were lined up properly. <laughs> uh, the engine might have fallen out of everywhere. Uh, I think it is safe to say it doesn't work anymore. Uh <laughs> I, I, th I think it is safe to say we've made a truck flag. A truck flag. The engine is over here. Nothing really left of that. Um, and there we go. It was a success. I mean, if we we're over here, nobody would know we've made a big, a big mess of everywhere. I mean, let's just. Look over that way towards the giant portal to hell that may or may not still exist somewhere. Nobody has any idea. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. It has been fun, guys. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this stream. We have, well... I say we've well achieved, considering we hit that car about two or three hundred miles an hour with a super-powered truck, uh, that still vaguely looks like the car it started out at, which is fairly impressive. That's not... That's not like the truck it started out at. I think that's the drive shaft. You know what? Probably is. Yeah, I hope you guys have uh, have enjoyed the stream today. Uh, as ever, thank you very much to those of you who have donated. I believe I read out all of those messages. It is uh, it is greatly greatly appreciated. Um, we tried our best to balance pigeons on top of a silly wing. It didn't quite work out, but uh, <laughs> it was impressive. It was impressive, nevertheless. Uh, tomorrow I will be streaming. I won't be on YouTube. Tomorrow we'll be back to Twitch. We will be playing some Gran Turismo 4. We might be. I'm not... Well, I say we might be. I am hoping, fingers crossed, I can get the uh, wheel size mod cheat thing to be working. So we might be going racing with some essentially silly donks. Uh, <laughs> donks and monster trucks of the normal little... Uh, God knows what we'll end up making. But it should be good fun regardless. Uh, there won't be it won't be very serious tomorrow when i ever serious we've just thrown a 400 mile an hour truck at a stricken toyota so you know either way it, it should be it should be entertainment uh, yeah that though is going to be it for for today thank you for watching and until next time a uh, goodbye